Hey everybody, it's Pastor Doug Zirkel from Mission of Grace here in beautiful Hayden, Colorado. It's a well-kept secret. We're tucked in between Steamboat Springs where all the skiing and that type of stuff is. And Craig is to the other side of us. And uh, of course there's beautiful countryside there and lots of mountains and hunting and stuff like that. And we're right here in the middle in the perfect spot. Um, just to let you guys know a few things. One is you probably know, some of you do, that I was in a really bad car accident several years ago, three or four. Um, and I was in the hospital a long time and I was all beat up. My body was all pretty much broken up and everything. And, and people around here were awesome. The people in town, the, the people in the church, all the churches, everybody was just wonderful to me. And I really got messed up really good. And one of the things was a, a bad, serious uh, head injury. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because you might catch me every now and then saying something a little offbeat or struggling with the word pronunciation or something like that. I think I just did it. Anywho, uh, I'm just letting you know that I'm getting a lot better. I got a lot of help and people are working with me. But I still might say or do something kind of stupid, so just bear with me. It's a great excuse, by the way, if you've ever had a brain injury, because when I don't remember stuff, I just tell my wife, oh, yeah, sorry, don't remember, you know, head injury. But anyway, unfortunately, she's too sharp to let me get away with too much. But I want you guys to know, for example, last Sunday, we were live streaming like we're doing now, and it was Easter Sunday, and the scripture I was talking about was when Jesus, after being resurrected from the dead, came up to his some of his guys out in their boats fishing. And they didn't recognize him, but he recognized them and said, hey guys, have you caught any fish yet? And they said, no. And he said, well, what side's the net on? He said, put it on the other side, the better side. Uh, you know, put it, put it in the water, but move it to the other side of the boat. And so they did. And of course they caught so much, they couldn't even pull the thing in without a bunch of them having to do it. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because one of the points I was trying to make last week is when you're struggling and stumbling and trying something over and over again, maybe a refusal of Christianity or an attempt at Christianity or whatever. Hey, if things aren't working, pick the net up and toss it on the other side. Don't give up. Keep working because God's got blessings and knowledge and many things in store for you, but you might have to kind of change up what you're doing to seek and find what you're looking for. And that was one of the points I was trying to make. And of course, at the end, I realized I totally used that scripture and never hit that homer. So there it is. If you were paying attention last week at all, uh, hopefully that this sort of sums it up. Now today, my topic is uh, to not make God complicated. And for some reason, people make him much more complicated than necessary. Believe me, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, he's the easiest thing in the world to figure out. He is not. It is a challenge. It can be difficult at times, like anything we invest our lives in. There's going to be some learning curves, some new understanding that we weren't even expecting, and other things. But it's certainly not complicated to believe in God. Um, I don't think it's important to make searching for him as difficult as some of us tend to do, too. Where a lot of us think, well, if I can get better, if I can try harder, if I can fight and, and progress and get my act together quicker, well, the God will help me faster. Not true. God's for the needy, for the broken. He's not for people that just totally have it together. He's for people like me and perhaps you. People that aren't afraid to hit their knees and say, you know what? I've been living a while and I've tried some stuff and I'm just not quite where I wish I was or where I should be in life. Maybe God can help me and God can restore me and rebuild my marriage and, and help me with my kids or my job or whatever. I think sometimes we make it far too difficult to go to a God who loves us and cares about us. I do wanna mention this too, that if you're looking for God without the need or the hope of finding him, it's kind of like fishing in a pool with, with desert sand. It's not going to work. If you don't really want it, if you're not really serious about it, if you're not really yearning to know and have a relationship with a living personal God, don't knock yourself out trying because you're just wasting your time. But if you're that person 
that's looking for that little bit extra, well, it's God. You can quit playing games. You can quit judging yourself and everybody else. You can quit being afraid of being in that group that's the goofy group that believes in God because everywhere you turn, we're ridiculed and mocked in one way or another because people think we're wasting our time trying to trust God and uh, we're not. But it's so easy to tease and make fun of people and their beliefs. Uh, you know, it's easy to make fun of people because of the color of their skin or their age or their gender and various struggles we all deal with during life. But it's just, for some reason, Christianity, that you have all the fun you want with that. And the good thing is, is we can take it. Jesus can definitely take it. I remember years ago, some artist, you know, some big shot artist, I'm, I don't know if he was any good or not, but he had a, 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 a jar full of urine with a cross in it. And boy, that was the big thing at the time. And Christians handled it pretty good. But I always thought, why didn't that guy put the Quran in that uh, jar? Why didn't he get a little gutsier than he was? Because it's easy to pick on Christians because we're, we're relatively peaceful people. And we're not trying to get in a fight with anybody because the God we serve is a God of love and generosity and kindness. He has compassion and cares. And so do most Christians. But it's easy to pick on the ones that aren't so hot or don't quite have some things figured out yet. And perhaps the problem is they make God too complicated. They get too superstitious or they get all bent into stuff that they don't need to. Like right now is a time in our country where people are reading into the end of times. Is this the end of times? Well, I look at it like this. It's an apocalyptic day when you find out your child has leukemia. It, it's Armageddon the day you face cancer and it takes your life. It's always near the end, always near the end. Is Jesus coming back? I believe he is, but I think a lot of people are wasting a lot of time, almost giddy that this might be the end, almost a little too giddy about it. It's like, calm down, calm down. God's got this stuff under control, but if you want to get in there and try to turn it into a physics project or something, knock yourselves out. But man, there's no peace if there's no love and there's no gentleness of God flowing through us. But some people are so bored, they get a kick out of the fact that maybe a bunch of people are going to get wiped off the face of the earth. Silly, man. I mean, I probably lost 90% of the viewers right there, but come on. God's complicated in that he's almighty, glorious, creative God who knows the inside of us like he knows all the universe, all the... The uh, stars around us. God's got it all figured out. But if we want to make it complicated and silly and goofy and keep turning people off, well, that's what we can do. But we shouldn't. Um, let's see. What else do I want to say here? I want to read out of Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's, now, it's not that we should be stupidly childish, stubbornly childish, or any of that kind of business. It means our mindset needs to slow down, calm down. God's not that tough to figure out. And he's certainly not hiding from anybody. If you were alone on a desert island and didn't have a Bible, I guess you're, you're out of luck. I guess you're done. But what if there was a God that would still speak to your heart? What if there was a God who could still communicate and lead you and guide you and enable you to pursue him in a way that brings peace and joy to your life, even though your circumstances are pretty messed up? Hey, he's there. He's there. And some of you know it. And you need to get back on the knees of your heart and say, God, help me again. Maybe you need help over and over and over and you think you failed Christianity or you'll never find God because you're to blame. But the truth of the matter is God's not going to give up on anybody who really wants to give him a shot in their life. Anybody who needs to be redeemed or recovered from sin and bad mistakes, God's on our side. We're his creation. He loves us. Did you know most of the problem with Christianity is that it's too religious? We've made this big deal out of it, like men have to do this, and you better do that, and you better follow that. Hey, what if you didn't have anybody to follow? Would you follow God anyway? 
Can you take care of yourself? Can you hear the Holy Spirit of God? Why do you, once you become a Christian, have to look like everybody else is a Christian? It's silly. It's not necessary. God created you to be exactly who he intends you to be, which is far better than what you can do on your own. God wants to take and enrich your life, give you himself. He's always giving. But we have to be a little bit more simple, I guess, not stupid simple, but simple in that we're willing to have the energy and the determination and the honesty and the willingness to have an adventure through life like children do. Children, man, they want the good stuff. They want to play. They want to have fun. Or am I saying, well, that you're just telling us to be irresponsible? No, I'm not. Part of being an adult is being responsible. And you teach children responsibility. And if we do a good enough job, I guess they grow up to be responsible. But ought to tell us something about how many of them aren't responsible. How many children that are older than I am, older than maybe most of you, that are still kind of childish. They never grow up. The whole thing about a child is to raise them up so that they can be active and productive and, and have joy in their own adventure through this life. Well, to me, that takes Jesus Christ. Uh, so, I'm going to get down here and mention a few scriptures to you. One, it's important to ask questions. If you're involved in anything and you're unable to ask questions about it, that's a problem. I was watching this thing on Scientology last night, which I don't know anything about it, except they get kind of frustrated with people that are asking questions. At least that's what I understand. I think most people go to any church, they feel kind of funny, silly, they can't ask questions, they don't know what to say, they don't get the lingo, and people feel like they're, people are looking at them funny, maybe judging them either. Why would we do that? Jesus Christ didn't do that. Jesus Christ gave himself away all the time, still does. He's a giver. Uh, it says here in uh, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, for my thoughts, this is God talking to us, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For he has, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. I mean, we're not going to figure him out. We wouldn't want to. But we want to know him better than we do. If he's got gifts of life to give us, talents he's given us, opportunities he's given us, blessings he's given us. It doesn't matter if we're well fed or hungry. It doesn't matter if we can walk upright or we're crippled. Man, if God's got our hearts, if God's got our spirits and they're his spirits because we've yielded them to him, guess what? It's a win-win. It doesn't matter what you have or what you don't have. It matters who you are and what you stake your life in. I stake my life on Jesus Christ. I have nothing to lose doing that. He's been nothing but good to me my entire life. And I haven't had the easiest life in the world. Oh, you're a preacher. Hadn't always been. I like being a preacher because I like telling people about God. He changes people's lives. He changes their perspective. He readjusts things and makes things right because he's almighty. His thoughts aren't like ours. His ways aren't like our ways. He does things like we couldn't do. And let he lets us enjoy it with him. Do it with him. It's a wonderful thing to know God. And some of you are listening today because you either need to know him or you need to get right with him. And I don't mean right like in the old, you know, thunder and hell preaching. I meant you're missing the boat. You know you're not having any joy in your life. You're not being productive. Something's missing. You, you're sort of missing miserable you feel guilt you're willing to beat yourself up more than god would ever beat you up i'm just saying get alone today get on your knees and say god i'm not thinking about religion i'm not thinking about church i'm not thinking about i just need you help me god help me god he may say well you need to go back to church go, oh i'll never go back to church look church isn't designed to run your life Church is designed to help you restore your life. Be around other people who struggle just like you do. It's sort of a high-grade uh, AA, really. It's just people going, 
My name's Doug Zirkle, and I'm a sinner. And I need God. And that's what I'm here for, to be with other people of like minds that aren't here to brag or boast or act like we know everything, but just need to be a little closer to God. Same thing with the Bible. You need to read it. It speaks to you. It feeds you. It feeds you a little bit like, uh, uh, you know, not just feeds you, but feeds you good food. Like, let's say that there's two lions and they're born at the same time. They're equal in every way and they're going to fight. Well, you know the one that's going to win, right? The one that's eaten the best, the one that uses the best nourishment the best food. It's going to supply and get him through the, the endurance that he needs or the strength that he needs. The one that eats the best is going to be the best. That's why you need the Bible. There's nothing wrong with feeding your spirit. There's nothing wrong with uh, attaching yourself to God. A lot of scientists and whatnot in the world are believers, by the way, but uh, a lot of the naturalist scientists will say, all you got to do is feed the brain. Just feed the brain. Educators say, you just got to feed the brain. No, you've got to feed the soul too. And not only does Christianity feed the brain by being honest, relentless in the truth, uh, convicting when necessary in good and bad things, it feeds the soul and the brain. So is it easy? Mm, it can be complicated if you want to make it that way. But honestly, there's nothing complicated about God. He wants to restore you. He wants to make you whole. He wants to give you another chance. If you don't know uh, what to do and you're not sure and you're going, I don't even know where to start. Did you know that God, the giver, is willing to give you wisdom? It says in James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, if any of you lacks wisdom, I mean, that's total whole wisdom or wisdom in a moment where you're struggling with a deep issue. If you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the winds. Are you that person that just sort of wavers back and forth and goes with the flow and always has to fit into the crowd and wear the right clothes. And it's like, I think I mentioned this last week, you're still kind of in high school playing the popularity game and you just can't be the one who gets teased or mocked. Man, Jesus said, I was persecuted. You're going to be persecuted. Jesus is tough. He's bold. He's cool. He's got it together. And you're playing games. And I don't know how old you are, 20, 30, 40, 80. I don't know how old you are, but if you haven't been willing once to submit yourself to God and be patient with God and allow God to give you that second chance or that 100th chance or however many it takes, he's willing to do it if you're willing to do it. You know, it's like anything else. What you put into it is what you get out of it. You think, well, I've gotten saved, so I'm supposed to die in a gold Cadillac and all my bills are going to be paid and all my health is going to be fixed. Sorry to tell you, you're still going to probably die unless he comes back before it's your time. You're probably going to have money problems somewhere. You're probably going to have relationship problems. You're going to have struggles and pain and hurt. You might watch a child die. You might yourself be diagnosed with a horrible disease. I don't know. But if you're sitting around thinking, well, God's got to fix everything. You know what he fixes? Right there. If he's right there, if you'll just trust him, if you'll just let go, if you'll just quit fighting the fight or making things more difficult than necessary and just rest and trust in God, guess what? That's all you need. That's all you need. It's never about promises. Let me tell you something. Being a Christian isn't learning lessons about life. We're not students. We're children of God. We're not students. We're children of adventure. We follow the King of King and the Lord of Lords. We're, we're not, everything that happens to you is not to teach you something. How boring is that, man? Don't you want out of school? It's time to kind of just accept the fact that it's an adventure you're on. And it's all jungle and, and crazy mountains and, and harsh waves. It's a real adventure, this adventure called life. And if you want to go through it on your own, you can do it. God's given everybody a choice. But if you want to experience life and the living God, 
Forget the judgment, the condemnations, and all the things people tag Christianity with. I'm talking about God himself. You and God. Why don't you ask him what he thinks of you? Why don't you ask him if what you're doing is right or wrong? Why don't you trust him? It says, in, uh, as you probably all know, in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. You may be so far off the path that you intended to be on by this time in your life. You're totally missing the fact you don't have to get back on that path. The path you're on, he'll just straighten it while you're on it. Well, I got to get back in God's will. You know how you get back in God's will? You get on your knees and say, God, I'm going to try again. Help me. Help me. Help me. Teach me something. Help me learn. The adventure's going to happen. You might as well get on it. If you're off on your own and you think you're really living, you know, while well, I write music for a living, I do this, and you've really got it together, you don't if you don't have God. And I'm not talking about religious God. I'm talking about the God. So you know what people do that make things complicated? They just act like God doesn't exist. They can't make it without trying to figure out something they don't even have to figure out. You know what the problem is? They're not submitting to anything. They're not going to acknowledge God and they're not going to yield their heart. He's not saying yield anything. Else. Just trust me. Give yourself to me. Let me help you. Let me walk with you. Let me be a part of your life. I'm encouraging, let God do it. Let him be a part of your life. Uh, let's see, down here in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 14, it says, This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. Okay. Nehemiah 8.10 tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Why can't we experience joy? We can't rest. We won't listen to God in our heart. We, we're too afraid of either being misled by idiots or afraid that we're going to stumble and fall doing it on our own or we're going to be made of, made fun of or picked on because we happen to believe in something greater than ourselves. Not true. Trust, repent. All repent means is to turn away from your, what you're doing. Sort of like the fishing thing I used at the beginning. Take the nets that are empty and throw them over the other side. Try something new. Reach out to God. Might put a little effort into this thing. And you know what? You've repented from something that wasn't working. And you started doing something that does work. And it always comes with following the voice of the Lord. You may say, well, how do I know that's really his voice and not something that people tell me or I'm making up in my head. I can't explain that part of it except to tell you, you've got to start somewhere. Trust God. Trust him with your own heart. Don't try to lean on what you think you can figure out. Trust him. You say, well, I'll be a puppet. I'll be, I'll be a robot. I won't be able to have intelligence or think on my own. That's all a lie. But you're going to give all that stuff up just because you're going to give God a chance. I think people that, are, that don't believe in God expect everybody to give up thinking and free thinking and open-mindedness and adventure because you, they're the ones who say, you better think like us or you're a fool. People that don't find God tread where fools tread. I'm just telling you the truth. Say, you idiot, you don't like us, you don't know me. I have no reason not to dislike anyone that I can think of. But I'm tired of acting like stupidity is okay if you're on one side and not the other. I'll call out the stupid people in our bunch. But I don't understand why anybody can't pull out the stupid in the other bunch. There's people that don't believe in God and sacrificing their lives and the lives of their children for nothing. No reason. Except pride. Unwilling to give God a chance. Too proud. Never be too proud. Never be too proud to give God a chance. Give him a chance. He's the living God. He, he doesn't need religion to tell anybody what to do if you'll trust him. Like I said, the reason we gather as believers is because we're in that same boat, man. Doug Zirkle, Chief Center, 
That's what Paul, the great apostle Paul said, I'm the chief sinner. But he heard God. He followed God. He loved people. It says in the Bible uh, to love others as Jesus Christ loves you. Man, how great would the world be if we all treated each other the way Jesus Christ treats us? Kind, gentle, forgiving, restoring, helpful, willing to serve, willing to feed, willing to sacrifice. I hear all that all the time with big timers that act like they do that and they don't do any of it. And yet they criticize the people that are willing to do it. Anyway, all right, well, I've said a lot. I do want to say this. If you need Jesus Christ and you're willing to trust and give him a chance, just tell him. Say, well, I've never pray, know how to pray. Don't even worry. Just talk to him like I'm talking to you right now. Say, God, if you're there, help me. Fill me. Enter my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Give me a second chance. I believe Jesus Christ lived. I believe he died and I believe he rose again and that he wants to couple his spirit with mine. Please help me. I need a new start in this world. Help me with my kids. Help me with my job. Help me with my life. You know what? That's somebody willing to submit right there. There's nothing wrong with it. You should never be ashamed of it. And, and I'm talking to people who need it today. So I pray that you get it. I like to end with this phrase, trust in the Lord as you know him to be a man of forgiveness, understanding, and hope. Bless you. You guys have a great week this week, and I hope to talk to you next time. See ya.